mainly supporters of the opposition were hunted like they were some wild animals with a prize for the fact. There was a gruesome act of violence that my organization also reported in this period. After the presidential results were eventually released, Mogen Changirai, leader of the movement for democratic change, was reported to have won the election but fell short of reaching the 50% plus one level which would allow him to form a government. And according to the law in Zimbabwe, there was going to be a second round of election with only the first and second winners uh, taking part. The election was planned for June 27, the same year. As the date grew closer, the violence also increased significantly. And some of those targeted by this violence were our colleagues in civil society. In particular, an organization that worked around elections, the Zimbabwe Election Support Network, whose offices and the home of its director um, were raided. As all this was happening, most human rights activists, including myself, were conscious of the possible risk of the work that we were doing, that we could be detained, and most of us would hope from friend to friend uh, in terms of getting a place to sleep. Um, but all this really um, was mainly targeting um, supporters of the opposition, and the June 27 election eventually became a one-man race when the leader of the first round pulled out fighting violence that targeted his supporters. After the election, which was dubbed a sham throughout the world, the Zimbabwean political leaders across the political divide came to the negotiating table under the facilitation of former South African President Abu Mehdi which process was guaranteed by both the continental bloc, the African Union, and the regional Southern African Development Community Center. On September 15, 2008, Zimbabwe made history as the former protagonists came together to sign the Global Political Agreement, which paved the way for the inclusive government, which was consummated in February 2008.